Hey, it's time for Dreamcatcher again. On today's program, I'm taking dreams from people just like you who have decided and made the choice to become a dream catcher. Rather than just laying in your bed and dreaming and then wondering, wondering what that meant, I encourage you, become a dream catcher. Catch the dream that God is sending your way and then allow me to help you to find peace through understanding. Send me your dreams and let me help you determine what they mean. This dream is from a lady who's older now and, and yet she's um, still suffering for some hurt from a childhood. I call this the parents' mansion dream. She had gone home to be with her, her parents for Christmas and it was a very beautiful home. She said it was more like a mansion, very elegant, and that's not the case in real life. All her family was there except for her two brothers who in real life have already gone to be with the Lord. She said she didn't know what town they were living in, but she knew that she was in Nashville. Um, she had her two grandsons with her, and she was tired, and she took a nap. When she woke up from, the, from her nap, now remember, they're at Christmas time, all the food was gone. They had had the celebration without her. She was hurt. She was crying. She told her mother and daddy, she said, that this was the last time I'm coming over for a family holiday. She said she was tired of being hurt and lied about. She told her sister and her sister-in-law that she didn't know if she could ever forgive them for eating the food. Now, she told me that in real life she has forgiven these people many years ago. So this is something that she's been struggling with in real life as well. She said in the dream that she had a very hard time getting back home. It was raining, there was lots of muddy roads, and she was driving a red Ford Ranger. She said that she used to really own one. And sometimes in the dream, it would change from a truck to a bicycle to a wagon. And she said again, a second time, she said it's very hard getting home, and she woke up very sad and troubled. Now, this is a sad dream because She's going home to her parents' house for Christmas. This should be a place of safety, a place of acceptance. Christmas is a time when you share love and gifts, and yet she wasn't shown any love. She wasn't shown that anyone cared about her enough even to save her any food. They celebrated without her. It hurt her so deeply that she was afraid that she wasn't going to be able to forgive them. She says in real life she already has. But I encourage her to ask the Lord to f help her to forgive anyone that maybe she's not forget forgiven, but maybe she thinks she has. I, I often um, ask God to forgive me for sins that I have forgotten. In real life, this precious woman was hurt in her childhood. She feels unloved, unappreciated, um, unwanted. Her basic needs were not met. There was no nourishment in this dream. This has affected her throughout her life. Her journey has been rough. It's been muddy roads. It's been dirt roads. It's been a difficult journey. Remember, she said more than once how difficult it was. Much of what she has experienced through her life is directly connected to the hurt and pain from her childhood. The red pickup truck, she did used to have one, but it represents the blood-covered ministry. It's red. The truck is a ministry. It's a work ministry. It's a laborer uh, ministry. She's a laborer of the Lord. She has worked diligently to, to witness to her family, to her grandkids. Uh, when, the, when the truck became a bicycle, that shows that she does one-on-one. -on -one. She teaches her children, her grandchildren, one-on-one. -on -one. The wagon, she was talking about a wagon you pull behind. That's a place for her grandchildren to sit as she drives the bicycle or she drives the truck and she pulls them behind. They're going to go, they're going to follow the teaching that she's giving them and that's what her fear is. You've got to let go of the past, the past hurts and pains and look forward and focus on those grandchildren and raise them differently than you were raised. <music> I have a disclaimer on this dream. You can't help what you dream. And this is a little graphic, 
but there is a real message, not just for the dream catcher, but for you as well. In the dream, he's standing outside on a beautiful day. His dad's with him and a couple other people. And he looks up in the sky and there's two or maybe more Asian looking dragons flying across the sky. And he says from his dream perspective, he becomes one of them. He is one of the dragons flying and he, so he perceives what this dragon perceives. As this dragon is flying across the, fly, the sky, there's a trail of dragon poo <laughs> that's floating in the air and he's eating it. And in the dream, he's very disgusted. He said he doesn't taste anything, but he does feel the texture. Then the dream perspective changes and he's now down on the ground again, still revolted by the experience of eating the dung that's flying through the air. His dad is joking about it, trying to make light of the situation. He says, funny, not mean, just trying to, you know, make everyone feel a bit more at ease. The dream catcher is still trying not to get sick because of what he's tasted. Um, he said the dragons were probably scary, and yet with his father's joking and stuff, he didn't detect any fear. Uh, it was more making fun of, but the taste was very real. And the interpretation of that is that he's with his family on a beautiful day. So life is going along, everything's good and pleasant, the weather's good. The dragon symbolized the enemy, Satan. He appeared as a serpent in the garden, and he is the prince of the air. I want to read Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. It says, He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were natures of wrath just as the others. God is saying we were all sinners at one time. We all followed the prince of the air. The NIV version calls him the ruler of the kingdom of the air. So that's how come we know that the dragons represent the enemy. But Jesus came to offer life. He wants us to ingest life. James, uh, John 6.51 says, I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, and I shall give, which I shall give for the life of the world. See, Satan is trying to give you death, something waste. He offers waste where God offers life. Before going to bed, the dream catcher told me that he had prayed that God would show him where he may have missed God. And the Lord is showing him that some of what he has ingested in teachings or doctrines or just hearing is waste. And he allowed him to feel the texture, but he kept the disgusting taste away from him. Even in the dream, the sin, and that's what that represents, the waste was trying to make him sick. When he became a Christian, he was cleansed from the inside out. So I encourage you, seek the Lord for discernment to know what is life and what is waste so you only ingest life. The first part of the dream was I was in my employer's home and I, I leave the home, I get in my car, I'm going down the hill and I turn the lamp and my car turns over. And then the second part of the dream, I'm, I'm awake, I'm in, I'm in, I'm, I end up in water. And uh, while I'm, I'm at the top, you know, not like I'm floating down, but I'm in this bubble, some kind of bubble that is floating. And the water is the most beautiful stuff you ever laid your eyes on. It, it, it was so peaceful, and I, I was just loving it. It was just wonderful. And then I had this thought, oh, if I go to the bottom of this water, I won't have enough breath to get back up to the top. So and so I started I just took my I just took my fingernails and I busted the bubble. Then I ended up on top of the water and immediately when I got up on top there was a, a man in a speedboat and he had a rope tied to the end of his speedboat and I grabbed the rope. I mean, it was just perfect timing. I grabbed the rope, 
and he took and he kept going, and then he got to a bank, and and uh, I let go of the road, and then there was a man there, and he had on a white shirt and sleeves rolled up, and he reached out you know, with his right hand, and he got me, and he pulled me up, and then there was a newspaper article about the man in the boat. And I was so happy for us that the man in the boat got all this attention and then all this news about his boat. Well, the part of the dream that concerns me is the water part. I, I don't know if that is, I don't know if the water was good water or not, not good water. I don't know if I had discernment or if I was in the right place, but I just had the wrong thoughts and I wouldn't have drowned. I, I don't understand that part of the dream probably uh, financially or work related because you were at your employer's house when this happened and then you have an accident so then you know there's something going to be financially or security because an employee could be in security think about what your employer means to you um, security or finances or something the devil's going to try to wreck that try to turn that upside down in your car your ministry in your car upside down but like she said, the Holy Spirit has you in a bubble of protection and he's going to take you, you know, to the other side. Who on earth, except for my mother, forgets if they ate? Well, I, I got up and I got to working on my checkbook and I was doing this. You know, I don't think I ate today. That's never happened to me. Are you looking for a speaker for your next retreat or event? Robin's transparent style comforts and soothes during personal ministry. God save Paul. <laughs> if he can save Paul, he can save anybody. To schedule Robin, visit www.eechoes.com. This dream is from a female who told me that she's been taking care of her mother who's 88 years old and, and the, the dream catcher is just exhausted and she laid down to sleep and this is her dream. She was in a dark room of a house and then she made a pallet on the floor to sleep on. It was pitch dark. And then she sees a lion approaching her from the distance. The lion is moving slowly, but with precision toward her. At first she was startled and a bit fearful because she says, after all, you don't often see a lion approaching you in the natural. But as the lion came close to her, she felt like it was checking her out, but then it turned and went away. And she said she didn't know how much time had passed, but she saw the lion return. And this time the lion brought a treat for her to eat. It was like a doggy treat, uh, but she knew that it was a lion treat and it was given to her by the lion. She said she knew the lion wanted her to eat it. And so she saw the, wa the lion's tail wagging like a dog's, like it was friendly, so she ate the treat. Then the lion turned and left. The owner of the house was there and he entered the room and she told him what had happened and that she had eaten the treat and now she was concerned because she wasn't sure what the treat was and the man she said she sensed that he was from China and he assured her that it was edible and it was okay and the lion's mane she said was large and manicured as was his tail and then she woke up. I read this and I was so moved by the Holy Spirit, I, I cried when I read this interpretation. The thought of this mighty lying, looking over her and bringing her substance. In the Bible, there was a prophet that was sustained by ravens. God sent birds to bring them meat. In this dream, she's tired, she's laying on the floor, and the lion of the tribe of Judah is bringing her treats. Jesus himself is watching over her and he's her, her ever and your ever present help in times of need. She's exhausted. She's in a dark place in this room and yet he's there. He's watching over her. She's in the house which represents her life. It's a dark room. That's a, the current situation does not look very good for her and her mother right now. She's sleeping on the floor. This is a sacrifice that she's making as she cares for her mother. But Jesus sees and he is personally going to deliver lion treats for her. He is well pleased. You can tell because the lion's wagging its tail at her. The lion brought lion treats. That's awesome. 
the reason that the, the homeowner seems to be from China is because the lion and his treats, his blessings are known from, from America to China. You know, in, in cartoons, if you dig long enough, you, you end up in China if you're in America. That's just representing that the lion of, of the tribe of Judah and his blessings are known all over the world. And she said it best. She said that it was the lion treat and it was given to her by the lion. You eat those treats, you enjoy those blessings because the lion, Jesus himself, is treating you for your sacrifice. This dream is from a female and she's dreaming about lions. Now sometimes a lion in a dream is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Sometimes it's the enemy himself, and that's the case in this dream. She says she's in a room, but it feels more like a cage. There's a man in there with her that she doesn't know, and there's also lions in there. She's walking around in front of the lions, and they're not affecting her. They're not even paying her any attention. Then this man gets up, and he walks around among the lions, and he's attacked and mauled and, and probably dead. She's not sure at this point. She's watching this in horror, and the lion that just attacked him has blood all over its face, and it lays down at her feet and never once tries to bother her. About that time, a door opens to this cage-type room, and she hears a man's voice, very cynical, and he says, well, he shouldn't have gotten out and tried to walk among the lions. And then the door closes. Well, she sees this lion, and it's real close to her, and she's angry, so she starts kicking it, and it, it, it never attacks her, it never does anything. One time she kicks it really hard, and it roars at her, but that's all it does. And she decides that she's going to get up. She steps right over this man, who's obviously at this time she realizes he's dead. She steps over him, and she leaves the room, and, and she wakes up. This dream, as graphic as it is, is a promise from the Lord that He's going to be with you. He's going to protect you. If you're following His Word, if you're following His will, 1 Peter 5.8 says, Stay alert. Watch out for the great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. In this dream, this roaring lion did devour this man. He was able to devour the man because he wasn't under God's protection. In the Bible, there's an actual account in 1 Kings 20.36 where someone literally was attacked by the enemy. It says, The prophet told him, a man, Because you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, a lion will kill you as soon as you leave me. And when he had gone, a lion did attack and kill him. We have to stay under God's protection. When we remove ourselves from that, there are dangers out there. In the dream, a voice wasn't concerned about the man. He was blaming the man. He said the man deserved what he got. This is the voice of the world of judgment and condemnation, lack of compassion. Yet in the dream, the dream catcher was like Daniel. He was thrown into a lion's cage and was never harmed. The lion may have roared like he did in the dream, and he'll get in your face, but he can't harm you as long as you stay under God's protection. Psalms 91 is a lot of people's favorite psalm. Verse 7 says, Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. We live in a time where a lot of people are fearful of of danger, of sickness, of different things, but if you're under God's protection, He's promised to take care of us. Even though in this dream there were lions all around her, she was able to get up and simply walk away. And that's God's promise to you. This dream is very short. I call it Digging for Diamonds. The dream catcher said he and his wife were at a wedding and there was a large bucket of ice and they were digging through the ice searching for diamonds and they found some. This dream is a dream, it's also a promise from the Lord. God has invited this dream catcher and his wife to be part of the bridal company. As you're digging through the counterfeit, the ice, you find the real. There's a lot of stuff out there that looks good, that looks like something shiny and, and priceless. But 
Jesus is the real diamond. And this is a promise that as you dig through the counterfeits, you will know the real diamond. The word diamond is a Greek word that comes from the word atomus, which means unconquerable. In Christ, you are unconquerable. So keep digging through the false and the counterfeit, and you will find the truth. Walking, talking, debating, and arguing with God is a lighthearted collection of short stories depicting some of Robin's real-life experiences and testimonies. You'll laugh and cry as Robin shares her plight of being the new kid year after year. Take a trip along Robin's spiritual journey, which she describes as straight and narrow and straight up the side of a mountain. The three-book series is now available at Amazon.com. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my sister and I, her name is Sherry, and I were at McDonald's. She was at the counter ordering a yogurt. The server said they had to charge extra for the spoons. <laughs> she just kind of gave them a look like, you've got to be kidding me. There was a container of spoons to the right of the server. Sherry grabbed a handful of these and put them to the front of the counter so everybody could get a spoon if they needed it. Sort of in defiance. Right, right. <laughs> and the <coughs> server said, you can't do that. I walked over to the side of the counter where there were three men talking. One had an apron, like he worked back in the kitchen. One of the others had a white shirt, like he might have been a manager. I said, excuse me. The guy in the apron gave me a look and a frown as if to say, don't interrupt us. When they finished their conversation, the guy in the white shirt turned to me. I said, you shouldn't be charging for spoons. He had a black hoop earring in his left ear and maybe a ponytail. He said, well, we really need to change that. It's a restaurant and it's food. It's, it's representing, it could be a church, it could be a youth group, it could be a program in a church, it doesn't have to be this church, it could be, um, you know, a ministry, because it's, it's some place where people are coming to be fed. However, most of what they're giving is not nutritious food. It's, um, you know, it's something to fill your belly and keep you going, you know, spiritually. Mm -hmm. And she goes into these, this place and says, I want something healthy. And, I, and, I, and I'm gonna correct this injustice at the same time. So it's really a, a call to um, correct some things in a, in a ministry, in, in some place in her that is familiar to her. It may be um, you know, a work-related place, but it's something where she is called to correct the injustice and to, um, to make, she's showing that she's making the right choices, she's making good choices. Um, I, I keep feeling like though that it's um, like something going on like, a, like in a classroom or in, a, in a, a program or something that's trying to do the right thing but it's just a little off. It could be a false teaching, it could be a, you know, it could be someone that's talking bad about someone, you know, it doesn't have to be earth shattering. But the fact that you confronted them is showing a new boldness that you may not already have. Um, and you didn't throw a fit, you just told them, you called it what it was, and, and they changed it. I mean, it, it, it changed. So there's some real leadership. Um, I don't know what your position here is, but there's some real leadership um, symbolism in your dreams, and both of dreams, where you're concerned. It sounds like God is okay. moving you. You know, you can't help what you dream, and some dreams are just more graphic than others. This one is one of those dreams. I call it stomach pumped. The dream catches a female. She's at her doctor's office, and he has a long, flexible tube that's going down her throat into her stomach, into her te intestines, she says, and she knows it. She says it's like an extreme enema, and it's completely flushing, flushing out her system. The next scene, there's someone there from her past, and they're following her around. It's a, it's a man, and he's an older man. He's much older than she is, and he's wanting to be part of her life. He's kind of a deliberately um, everywhere she goes, he's there, and she's trying to get away from him. She's not threatened by him. She says she's mainly just annoyed by him. Um, she says in the dream that this man has an unhealthy uh, desire to be part of her life. She's married and, 
and he's just kind of always showing up there. Um, she said that he's probably even older than her father, and then she wakes up. Well, in the dream, she's at a doctor's office, and that's where you get help. That's where you receive healing and, and health. And so the doctor is representing Jesus. He has health for you, and he has healing for you. And he wants you to accomplish what he has for you, but first you have to cleanse your body from the inside out, your spirit, your soul. And specifically in this dream, he wants you to purge some things from your past. That's what this person from the past is. And the person is older in the dream, and whether or not that he really was in real life, um, we're not sure, but we know that this is something that's been there a while. It's not a new thing because the man is an older man in the dream. It's whatever this um, hindrance is from her past has been there long enough to mature and to to age. So there's some things going on. It could be sin. It could be old fears, desires. It could be maybe someone you're holding on to something in your past that is not dangerous because you didn't feel threatened, but annoying. And it's a hindrance. It's obviously a hindrance because in the dream you're focusing on deliberately trying to get away from him, which means to me that you're changing your plans. You're trying to redirect your path because of this person that's following you around. The Lord has called you. He has something specific for you to do. But there's some things in your past that you've just got to get rid of. If you aren't aware of what they are, ask him. Because his word says that if anyone seeks wisdom, all they have to do is ask and he'll give it to you. That's James 1.5. He wants to help you. He wants to show you what's in your past that's holding you back. And that's not just for this dream catcher. This is for you to examine your life. Is there something from the past that no longer fits? That not necessarily sin, but just something that's holding you back. God has a plan and a purpose for you, and He wants you to move forward, but there's something holding you back from your past, and it's been there a while. If it's like hers, it's been grown up, it's matured. He wants you to get rid of that so you can walk in the fullness that He has for you, and not just the dream catcher, but all of you. There's something that's going on that's holding you because none of us are where we are, where we could be, where God wants us to be. I encourage you, examine yourself. Maybe it's not past stuff. Maybe it's stuff that's going on even now. Get rid of those things that's stopping you from going forward in the Lord. You know you want to buy a copy of today's show. Can you believe it? We're out of time already. You know, I'm still amazed at how God, the creator of everything, sends dreams to us so we can be part of His plan. He's talking to us. He wants us to know what He's saying. He's given me the ability to understand visions and dreams and symbols, and I want to share that knowledge with you. That's what this program is about. Send me your dreams. Allow me to help you to find peace through understanding. Mm -hmm.